Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? It is Thursday, right? Today's Thursday, or is today Wednesday? I don't even know. I gotta figure it out. What is today, guys? Today's Thursday or Wednesday? I think today's Thursday. <sighs> I might be wrong, though. I have to figure that out. <laughs> to be honest, I really don't know yet. It's Thursday. Okay, good. Yeah, I didn't really know, to be honest. I, I thought it might be Thursday. Wasn't 100% sure. Yes, yeah, the last day of February. That's right. Oh, man, let me drink some coffee this morning. Wake up a little bit, right? All right. So, we got RKDA moving up a little bit. RKDA, HZNP. HZNP, we got JCP moving some. We got TTO, O, TGTX, Ruby, JD, CRC, we got some stuff moving. Yeah, no worries, Tech. All right. I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to go get some coffee. What's up, Cooper? The Quick. You bought on the crash? Hey, man, hopefully it'll work out for you, bro. Let's see what the spy's looking this morning. Yeah, I mean, that was a nice bounce back on the spy. The spy actually ended green yesterday, uh, surprisingly. All right, per two-way morning squawk. Futures were lower this morning after the U.S.-North Korean summit ended without an agreement. The NASDAQ managed to eke out a small gain yesterday and finish at its highest since November 7th. And so the Dow and S&P were lower for a second straight day. Um, small cap news, which is SQBG, which is Canopy Growth and Sequential Brands, which is SQBG, announced a collaboration on CBD product development, a float of $45 million. So CGC and uh, SQBG. Uh, basically announced a collaboration and SQBG is showing it is gapping up from 120 to 190s where it's sitting now high of 280 so far in pre-market CGC is up as well from 45.75 to 47.30s and so we do have that move for CGC that one looks interesting as well let's see we also have uh RKDA, Arcadia Biosciences, stock rockets on heavy volume after new cannabis-focused business unit announced. Tiny float of $2.9 million for RKDA. But yeah, it's definitely moving some, gapping up from 540s to the 830s. And so it looks good there for RKDA. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, we also have TTOO, which is, um, let me see what the name of this company is doesn't actually show me the name but it's moving some in pre-market the reason it's moving is the FDA granted a t2 biosystems breakthrough device designation for the t2 resistance uh, panel expected availability through the CE mark in 2019 a float of 27 million so relatively small float not huge um, <clears throat> and yeah that's what we have the thus far good morning bill appreciate that two-way thanks brother appreciate it all right, let's see what else we have here. All right, all right, I'm gonna, I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna go get some coffee. Yeah, it'll be it'll be cool to see what CGC does. We'll see what we get there. What's up, Jay? Good morning, man. Good morning, brother. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna grab some coffee.
<laughs> that it is, man. That it is. Coffee is the lifeblood of a day trader. That's right, bro. You got to get some coffee. CGC, man. Yeah, CGC is up. Uh, partnering with SQBG, Sequential Brands, SQBG, for CGC partnership. Um, looks not, it doesn't look terrible. So Shia says, so I'm starting the five-day demo challenge today, but was wondering about what this meant. Day trading positions only must be closed before the end of the trading day. It means no swing trading, no investing. You have to be in and out before the close each day. Correct. So it's only day trading. What's up, Chase? Good morning, bro. Good morning, man. Yeah, I mean, like I said yesterday, it's pretty difficult to 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 actually finish, but um, you know, it's pretty difficult. But I mean, it's still it's still worth a shot, you know. All right, all right. We also have DELL, -L, which is moving some. DELL, -L, -L, L I, A Z O, D B X. Uh, H Z and P doesn't look bad. H Z and P, I can look up the news for that one. Do I have a video that shows how to set up my screen? Um, which one? For which one, Shiz? For uh, TEFs? If you're talking about TEFs, I can um, I could show you at, after after I get done trading today how to set it up, if, that, if that's what you mean. Yeah, what's up, Mike? Yeah, no stress, brother. Welcome back, man. All right, so HZ and P is Horizon Pharmacal in its pharma, and it is up on positive trial of eye disease treatment. So positive data basically for HZ and P, and a positive trial for HZ and P. So that's pretty good news. We'll see where that one goes. Um, hold on, guys. Wife calling. All right, in a minute, my wife's going to call me. I'm going to have to run something out to her. But yeah, for HZ and P, we had had positive trial results. What's up, Jason? What's up, Scott? Good morning, guys. AT&T. What's the uh, symbol for AT&T? I want to say it's ATT, but I might be wrong there. And we also got CBS gapping up some CBS. Uh, NT and X. D and P. T? Okay. I mean, oh, there it is. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.
You also got Fitbit gapping down significantly. I mean, Fitbit's down some. Volume's pretty high. Gapping down from 687 to 570. So Fitbit's gapping down FIT. I, it popped up. It's on the down gap scanner. So it is down gapping here. Um, we'll see what else we have today. We have uh, AMD, which is down some after a red day yesterday. Uh, MU down some as well we got the overall spy which is the overall market which is down a small amount down a small amount about eight cents technically from where it closed and so basically break even for the spy right now um what else do we have here r-u-b-e r-u-b-e gapping up some we got crc Gapping up, all right, here. big, Pretty big range for CRC, for California Resources. is gapping up from 2182 to 2470 for CRC. What's up, George? Good morning, man. All right, we got JD. JD making a move here, JD.com. Big gap up here from 2590 to 2925 for JD. So a significant gap up there. Uh, for the rest of the cannabis stocks, I mean, CRON is up. CGC is, uh, had a pretty good news release out for it. And so I think a lot of the other cannabis stocks are going to be up on sympathy. ACB up a little bit. APHA uh, up a small amount, but volume's pretty low. Um, for the cannabis stocks, I'm mostly going to be watching CGC and CRON. Um, CGC is what I traded yesterday for that nice fade that we had yesterday uh, a few minutes after the bell. And so I'll be watching CGC again to see if we can get into a move like that. And so, yeah, that's what I'm checking out this morning. Uh, how's everybody doing? It is Thursday. I thought it was Wednesday. But it is Thursday today. <sighs> Got to drink some more coffee. So, yeah, I woke up to, like, this really, like, angry comment on my YouTube channel. Like, this really angry comment. You want to hear my response to it? My, my, my actual verbatim response, I'll read it, is that I go laugh out loud. You ever look at a comment and think, man, this guy shouldn't be mad. He has got to be pretty insecure, dot, dot, dot. That's you. <laughs> That's my comment back to him. But yeah, he was just angry for no reason. There's no reason to be that mad early in the morning like this, man. I don't need that negativity right now, bro. <laughs> I gotta watch that video somebody posted to the Discord as well. Right, I mean, his comment was uh, his comment was just mad at me. Like the other day, Mitch was in a trade, and uh, I had to get out of it to like, cause I was about to get in a trade. I had to like stop. Hold on, I'll be right back. My wife, I gotta bring something out to my wife. All right, I'm back. Man, it is it is kind of cold out here in Texas today. It's not like really cold. It's not like, you know, it's not like Michigan or Chicago cold or anything like that or like Canada cold, but like it's kind of cold here for us Southerners, you know, and uh, I can't really say I enjoyed going outside just now because I got on um, a sleeveless shirt here and uh, it's pretty cold. <laughs> yeah, man. 
uh, John Hood. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm just north of Houston. I'm in a suburb just north of Houston, man. But I mean, like I said, it's all relative. Um, it's probably like I'm guessing here. It's probably like 50 degrees, 55 maybe. It's kind of cold. It's not that cold. But no, that guy's comment, he was mad at me because because Mitch was in a trade. But it was one of those points when Mitch was in a trade, when Mitch was just kind of waiting for something to happen. And uh, a lot of people in, in my stream, like, watch it for the scanners. Like, a lot of people watch the stream for the scanners. And so I told Mitch, I was like, hey, man, let me know when you do something. I'll, I'll put it back on your end. And I started looking for stocks and kept the scanners up so people could watch it, which I think is pretty understandable. And he got mad at me for that and said... Uh, said I'm too scared to take bigger sizing and that Mitch isn't a full size trade. I should show his screen and that it's sad that I can't take full sizing and that I'm talking about a 28 cent donation, begging for donations and stuff. When it's really like, I don't ever ask anybody for donations. If anything, if you've ever heard me, if somebody says, Hey John, how do I send you a donation? Most of the time I actually talk the person out of it. I'm probably the only person that does that. If somebody wants to send me a donation, I literally talk them out of it, you know? And so, so yeah, like I said, it, the dude, and like I said, that's why my comment was just kind of like, you ever see somebody that should not be that mad at something? And so it, it, they just got to be pretty insecure. That's you, you know? That was my response. <laughs> right. Right. That's what I'm saying. But hey, it's going to happen. I probably shouldn't even give them that much, this much attention, though, is the problem. I think it's just early in the morning. I need to wake my coffee, uh, drink my coffee and wake up some. <laughs> right. Like, most of the time I talk people out. Like, I talk people out of donations a lot, to be honest. <laughs> It's not might not be in my own best interest, but I'll say, hey, you don't have to worry about it, you know. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, people send donations sometimes because they can, you know. It's kind of what if you do something on YouTube, people are going to try to send you donations. It's just kind of how it works. MTP, what is MTP doing today, two way? MTP crazy mover yesterday. Today, mm, you know. I mean, it's down at 70 cents. Never really could hold over a dollar, which kind of clarifies why that $1 level is so important. NIO is up a thousand percent since I bought it. I wish I'd bought more. Nine ninety, yeah, man. NIO, it's definitely one I've been watching lately. It's competing basically head to head with Tesla, and so that's what's interesting about NIO is that it's competing with Tesla. If Tesla goes up, NIO might go down, and if and if uh, Tesla goes down, NIO might go up. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying that's kind of what I would think. Since it's a Chinese, it's a Chinese electric car manufacturer is what it is. So it's kind of competing with Tesla. We also got TNDM, TNDM, which is interesting. PCG. Do you think NIO would be a long-term hold? Um, first off, I'm not really the best when it comes to long-term investing. I'm not saying I'm terrible at it. I'm saying I'm never really long-term invested in anything. I got an IRA guy that does long-term investing for me. 
Um, kind of funny how that works, but like I said, I've never really done long-term investing, so I don't want to give you the wrong answer, um, basically. Uh, now, looking at it, I, I would just look, it depends on what you would consider long-term. You know, if you're talking about uh, a few weeks, I mean, I don't know, a few years, maybe. This is an electric tricycle. <laughs> yeah, you can see uh, NIO here is what I'm looking at. I got RKDA, which is, looks pretty good, honestly. RKDA looking good here. And like I said, you got CGC that's up as well. I mean, those are probably the main ones I'm watching. CGC, obviously, I mean, got in a really nice fade yesterday here. So I'm watching it. Thinking at least a year for NIO. I mean, it's just looking at the daily chart for me. Um, not the daily, the three years probably more relevant. I mean, I think it could. It, it all depends on the fundamentals, which to be honest, I don't know that well. Uh, so it all depends on how this company's been doing, you know, what what's going on with it. I mean, it's been around a while. I've been trading NIO for a while, and so, you know, it seems to be pretty healthy, but who knows? It's had some nice moves lately. JCP up on pre-market. Yeah, man. I don't think it I don't think it's gonna survive either. You've probably heard me talk about it, guys, but like I think most any I'm I'm pretty my outlook is pretty bad for most retail companies right now. Unless you're like a grocery store. Like I think grocery stores are probably here to stay for the most part at least for the next like five, 10 years. But if you're like a retail clothing store or like basically any other retail brick and mortar store, I think that you're bound to fail with how strong Amazon is becoming and just online sales in general. I think GameStop, most likely going to fail. Barnes and Noble, most likely going to fail. Um, I don't know if anybody ever remembers Books A Million. I think they already failed. Uh, J.C. Penney, Sears, I think they're all going down, you know, um, and it's just because that's what I see. I think they're somewhat becoming obsolete in a way because uh, everybody's buying stuff and Amazon's becoming so, so powerful and online retail in general is. And so, you know, we'll see where it happens. It's gapping up some. You think the Tesla wagon will come way down? The electric car companies are coming out. Yeah, for sure. I can understand that logic. You know, for a while, Tesla was kind of the big dog, the only dog, so to speak, in town. And now that you have a bunch of other electric car companies coming out, they're actually going to have to compete. And uh, it's going to be tough. It may drag Tesla down. It may make Tesla go up some. It all depends. I know Tesla is easily the most uh, recognized electric car company. And so it's definitely the coolest one, I, I would say. But I've, I've, to be honest, I haven't really looked much at the other ones. Yeah, even books in general. Books are becoming somewhat obsolete. But here's the thing, right? Like, if, you, if you've heard me talk about it, like, I actually run an Amazon bookstore, like a used bookstore. I've got, like, four or 5,000 books in my inventory, right? That's what I do. It's one of my other jobs, right? And uh, you would think that people aren't buying physical copies of books, but they absolutely are. Uh, they absolutely are. You know, I probably sell 20, 30 books a day. Um, and so people are buying them. Um, I think there's something about being able to hold a book in your hand. Um, now, do I think people are going to Barnes and Noble and stuff like that to buy physical books? Not really. I think people would rather have them shipped to them. But regardless, I think that I think that people are still using physical books at least. JD, sorry. Let me check out JD, bro. Yeah, I got you. JD, I know it's a... Let me see. Let's look up JD here. Alright, so it sounds like they have an earnings conference call today. I 
right, so positive earnings, it seems, is what's going on with JD. Here, I could pull this up. This is the one he was talking about, JD down here, the bottom chart. Um, yeah, so JD did report better than expected fourth quarter earnings today, uh, which is kind of going against the slowdown in Chinese economic growth. And so it is a China-based e-commerce company, and uh, it, it reported earnings of seven cents per share on a net revenue of nineteen point six billion. And so positive earnings and revenue for JD, and it is up this morning in pre-market. Significant move up. I'll definitely be watching this one as well, and so we'll see what happens with it. RKDA. Yeah, I think we've gone over. What's up, Nick? Uh, card catalog. For the most part, Tyrell. I do a few different things, man. But for the most part, I work from home. For the most part. But yeah, for the most part, I work from home. I mean, I do it. Like I said, I do a, f a few different things, man. I do. Uh, obviously, I do this YouTube channel, um, run the website. I'm a real estate agent, and so I'm a real estate agent here in, in Texas. And uh, I have an Amazon used bookstore, and I have a Kindle store as well. And so I do a bunch of different things. And so yeah, I mean, I guess I work from home, but it's not. I don't want to be misleading, like. Technically, I work from home, I guess, but it's not passive, you know. All right, RKDA. We can check out RKDA. Let me see if I can find two-way posting about it. I know two-way posted about it this morning. Yeah, RKDA is Arcadia Biosciences, and they're up after a new cannabis-focused business unit was announced. Tiny float on RKDA of $2.9 so a very small float. For RKDA. And uh, we'll see what happens here. But a new cannabis focused business unit for RKDA. I got to look this up to see what this is. And so RKDA apparently is an agricultural food ingredient firm. They announced the creation of Arcadia Specialty Genomics, ACG, which is a cannabis-dedicated business unit which will initially focus on the, the hemp market. So when they say the hemp market, they're mostly meaning CBD. Um, it says it will develop cannabis varieties possessing productivity, pest resistance, and crop quality traits to license to cultivators and for products serving the nutraceutical and food industries I'm happy I pronounced that correctly I'm pretty sure I got that right <laughs> Musk is doing Elon's doing some sort of announcement today at 2 p.m. Cali time changed his Twitter name to Elon Tusk with an elephant emoji Everyone guessing. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man. They're moving from horsepower to elephant power. <laughs> Maybe so. Nice, Nick. Yeah, man. I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm a real estate agent. You could say I work from home, uh, but a lot of times I'm not home, you know, and so. But I do a lot of different stuff. I honestly don't sell that many houses just because I focus on other stuff and, uh, I just got a bunch of other stuff I'm doing. What are my thoughts on HZNP this morning? HZNP. I think I'll look this one up. This one is up on the positive trial of eye treatment disease. Their eye, eye disease treatment, sorry. Yeah, it announced positive results in a late-stage trial of a treatment for active thyroid eye disease, or TED. 
Uh, it said the phase three trial of, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, met its primary endpoint of improving proptosis or bulging of the eye compared with the placebo. 82.9% uh, of patients showing improvement compared with the 9.5% of placebo patients. And so that's definitely showing positive results. Um, the trial also succeeded in meeting the secondary endpoint and achieving a consistent safety profile with the phase two study. Uh, it's expecting to submit a bio biologics license application to the U.S. Uh, FDA in 2019. So we'll see what happens with that one. Interesting news. Definitely positive for uh, HZNP. HZNP. Definitely positive news for it. We'll see where that one goes. Gapping up. Let's see. Gapping up. A pretty significant amount from 2185 to 2606. Also, WATT popping up on the pre market movers. WATT up a little bit here. What's the float, Nick? If you could tell me, what, what is the float for HZMP? Oh, wait, it's right here. It is 163 million. I mean, it's not super high. It's not small. It's right around the middle for HZMP. It's not like ridiculously high, um, but it's not small either. Honestly, JD has a huge float. I didn't even realize, but JD has a float of 1.2 billion. And it's actually moving a lot for having that big of a float. What's up, Neo? What's up, bro? LFAP, multi-day runner. Yeah, man, that thing just went up um, over 300%. Penny stock, but it's up over 300% or so. You also have TTOO, which is interesting. T2 Biosystems. I'll check that one out. ADIL popping up in pre-market as well, ADIL. But yeah, we got TTOO, we got Cron. Some of the ones I'm mostly going to be paying attention to are the cannabis stocks. I've been watching those every day for the most part here. But the reason being is because CGC had a partnership collaboration. And uh, CGC is up a ton, and so that may drag some of these other ones like CRON, ACB. Typically, they follow each other a decent amount. So I'll be watching those to see what happens with them for APHA, CGC, Cron, um, you know, the rest of the cannabis stocks, ACB, BILI. Let me check out BILI. I'll be right back, though, guys. I'll be back in like two minutes.
All right, I'm back. All right, guys, we got about 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Solo, I need to watch Solo. I haven't been watching it as much as I should be. Um, it's been moving a ton the last few days, so I got to keep an eye on that one, too. Hey, appreciate the sub, Nicholas. Welcome, bro. Appreciate it. Hmm. But yeah, RKDA, JC Pity, I watch CRC, basically the other cannabis stocks as well. Uh, it's been a pretty good run in the market the last two weeks. I have had, uh, what? I gotta look at my, uh, I gotta look at my stats to see, uh, this week. I can't remember what I've had this week. I think I've done pretty well. I don't know. I've never used CME Group before. I've heard good things, though, but I've never used them. All right, guys. Let's get ready. I'm going to pull up the intraday charts. So far in pre-market, we got ARWR moving some. Uh, looks a little slow. I mean, DB, Dropbox, or no, Joycha. I didn't even know Deutsche Bank was still around, to be honest. PVTL moving a little bit here. <laughs> basically, Jason. Basically, man. I mean, it's not technically a penny stock. It's uh, 150s is what it does usually. So it's technically not a penny stock, but the float's huge. For a penny stock, but it is, it's a dollar fifty. We got EKSO. Oh, BILI. What's up, John O? What's up, bro? Oh, yeah, BILI looks good, man. Appreciate that. I kind of missed that one. Uh, I know you mentioned it earlier. I forgot to look at it. But let me look at it now. BILI. It's up on strong uh, fourth quarter revenue growth. It's another China-related stock. Um, net revenue is up 57% to 1.16 billion yen, uh, beating the analyst ex estimates of 1.06 billion. And so good revenue uh, from advertising and live broadcasting uh, for BILI. And so interesting numbers there. We'll see what happens. Yeah, BILI actually looks pretty good here. You can see BILI here. It looks pretty pretty decent. Pretty decent. All right, so let's get everything ready here. We got about five minutes left, of a little bit over five minutes, but let's get stuff ready here to trade. Right. So, yeah, technically, JCPenney is a penny stock then. <laughs> Technically, you know, all right, let's get this done. There we go. Got it all set. All right, guys, like I said, watching uh, RKDA, B-I-L-I, -I, watching JD, T-T-O-O, -O, uh, AMD, obviously, the cannabis stocks, Cron, CGC. Um, what else do we have? We have YNDX is another one I've been watching lately, YNDX. We got uh, the SPY overall, got to keep an eye on that. Um, what else, guys? What else? What else am I forgetting here? W-A-T-T, -T, maybe? W-A-T-T, -T, we got A-C-B, A-P-H-A. Yeah, all right, I think I'm set. All right. Let's do it. What's up, Isaac? Isaac. 
Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of traffic on JD, uh, especially considering it's a 1.2 billion float stock. The float is huge for JD. Good luck, traders. Not excited for anything right now. Plan to not force any trades. Easier said than done. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I kind of agree. I mean, it, for me, it, it just depends. Right, like I trade a little bit different stocks than you, and so in the penny stock world, I definitely see like not too much that looks great, but still gonna be watching stuff. Obviously, we got about three and a half minutes. RKDA went to did it really? Wow. Yeah, man, last year. In March, this thing skyrocketed up to 6650s. Man, that's a crazy move there, man. And so it's definitely a former runner. The, the problem with this big move is that it makes it hard to look at any of the moves since then. It usually comes right back down, though. Most spikes, it comes right back down. And right, and right now, it's up to here, which is uh, interesting here. So the high of this move right here on RKDA, 840s. I think that's an interesting level to watch, 840s. But yeah, definitely going to be watching it here. All right, guys, we got about two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. We got Isaac in here. What's up, bro? Oh, man, dude. I'm just now seeing that. I didn't even watch the basketball game, bro. That's terrible. The Lakers are OP, though, man. They're just overpowered, man. The New Orleans Pelicans. The Pelicans should have done that. What's up, the best? What's up, man? Long time no see, bro. Good to see you, man. What's up, Outsiders? What's up, bro? A-L-D-R. A-L-D-R looks all right. What's up, Vice? What's up, man? Yeah, A-L-D-R looks interesting. It's low volume, but it looks okay here. I mean, it's just weird. A weird move. I might keep an eye on it. Appreciate it, Vice. Thanks, man. All right, guys. We got about a minute left. One minute. BOX falling. Man, BOX did get hit. What is it? Bad earnings, uh, Vitalis? Bad earnings? Appreciate it. Yeah, good luck to everybody. Market's opening up soon in about 30 seconds. Let's do it. Earnings reports, yeah, bad earnings. Makes sense. All right, guys, we got about 20 seconds. JD slipping. I mean, it's still up a ton for JD. All right, guys, market's about to open up. Good luck. Good luck. Here's the bell. Here's the, there it is. All right, we got BILI and HZ and P popping up on the scanners. We also have TGTX, TGTX. We got Cron dropping, CGC down some, AMD down, ACB down. We got the SPY down. And so a quick dip at the open for some of these. Spot bouncing back some. We might see some bounce backs in the cannabis plays too. ACB wearing it a little bit more than some of these other ones. We got AMD spiking up. We got Cron spiking up. 
I appreciate the subs, Nicholas, Sammy. Thanks, guys. We got AMD spiking up here. Cannabis plays moving up a little bit. We have uh, BILI, HZNP moving some. HZNP about to test the pre market high. HZNP. You can see the pre market high right here at 27.75. It's at 2740. Looks interesting here. Big spike up for HZNP. Big move. Uh, we got CGC and the cannabis plays moving some. At least CGC is after that collaboration agreement. Spy dropping some. Kind of sideways so far though. BOX rebounding some. Maybe a you know bounce here after that big gap down. Cron moving up. RKDA dropping sub here. Tesla dropped three dollars. I think I already posted the list who got those, but I think I could post it again. Man, it's not there anymore. I have to scroll up and try to find it who got those. But what's up, man? Um, if it's if it lets me still see it. Yeah. It, all right. Here you go. I found it. There you go. All right, we got RKDA dropping here. Um. We got HZMP pulling up. We got maybe CGC for a VWAP bounce here. CGC for maybe a VWAP bounce. We got SQBG. Might be a little bit too late for CGC's VWAP bounce here, but let's see. Uh, could have been a 20 cent risk. Almost 30 cent reward for CGC there. Let's see. I'll consider it. Kind of spready though. That's gonna hurt my risk reward on this one. A little spready for CGC. Not terrible though. Let me see where my entry. Right now it's about a 30 cent risk. Cron pulling back some. Ugh. NIO is down. I forgot to watch NIO too, man. Yeah, but to show you guys what I was really looking for, I was looking for this. Uh, I'm not seeing any big enough drops for to really consider a fade at this point. Maybe WATT. But what I was looking for with CGC at least is if I get in here at 47.20, I set this 47 level as my risk. I can set that previous high of the day up here as my reward. And so it's just a really good risk reward trade. Risk of about 20 cents reward of like what? 20, 40, 51 cents. So 20 cent risk, 50 cent reward. Um, that's what I was looking for. It looks like it would have followed through really nicely there. Just uh, saw it a little bit late. Got to be a little bit quicker with these, but look like a good trade regardless. Nice two-way. Good job, brother.
All right, so we get a big drop back down on CGC. I don't really like it anymore. Um, the reason I don't like it is because it pulled up and it never even tried to make that push. And so it's actually looking weaker here. It could still follow through, but at this point, not my favorite one. Um, Spy starting to crash here as well. Spy dropping some. Not crashing, but the Spy's dropping. So the overall market's dropping a little bit now. Second day in a row. Although the, it did rebound yesterday. We got BOX, which is rebounding from that big gap down. Volume's a little low today, though, guys, to be honest. Um, at least from what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing too many drops that look good for a fade. What did BILI end up doing? Whoa, look at BILI drop here. Big drop. Spy bouncing back. CGC coming all the way back down to 47. So glad I didn't take it there. Like I said, I didn't really like it after it made this drop under it and then this bounce back because it failed that push. Usually with the VWAP bounces, you want to see a quick move. You want to see it pull up, down to the VWAP, and then a quick move back up. If it doesn't make that quick move, I don't like it as much. I'll be right back, guys. All right, I'm back. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, CGC dropping down, testing the low of the day. Maybe start looking for that one. I'll maybe start looking at that one at a rejection now. It doesn't look terrible for rejection. If you get in here at 47.20s, use a risk of maybe 47.40. Um, 20 cent risk reward level of 46.80. That's about 2 to 1 uh, if you use this 47.40 level as your risk. Um, kind of looking at that at this point. We'll see what we get, though. Um, Hmm. Same thing could be said with AMD. ACB actually looks like a pretty good fade here. ACB. Oh, I just now saw it. Uh, risk could be at 59. It's just a, such a small range stock, right? And so risk could be at 59. So with that, I would have to use bigger share size. Like Since my risk is like 3 or 4 cents, my reward would be about 6, 7 cents. So not terrible risk reward, maybe a little bit late, but the fade didn't look terrible for ACB here. NIO, if it gets up to 79, could move. It's just a little bit lower volume day for NIO, which makes me a little bit more hesitant with it. Um, there goes ACB. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it looked looked good. 
Um, it's just the range is so small. Even CGC would have followed through as well here. Um, and so missed out on maybe both of those. I don't hate WATT there. WATT looks good if it pulls back to that 624 level. SPY is actually rebounding here, though, so that might kind of push some of the rest of this stuff up. Sorry, Isaac. What's up, Terms? Hmm. Yeah, sorry if my mic's cutting out. I don't mean it to. Um, at this point, I'm kind of looking at NIO here. I'm just worried about the volume is the only thing. Uh, if you see what I mean, and it, I just missed it. Uh, NIO bouncing up to 978. I could have used, uh, I don't know, 85 as my risk here for a uh, 7 cent risk. And then from 78 down to 64 uh, maybe is my reward target. So about a 13, 14 cent risk. And so that didn't look terrible. About two to one for that one, but a little bit late now. NIO would have worked well. Uh, what else? Like I said, I'm kind of looking at WATT. The only thing that I'm a little bit hesitant with now is that the market overall, the SPY is starting to push up. You can see the SPY is really starting to head up here. And so I got to be a little bit more careful now that the overall market has a bullish sentiment because that could drag some of these other stocks up basically is my logic at this point. Um, and so kind of looking at WATT. I mean, if WAT pull, but pulls back to 620s here, I could use uh, this level as my risk, 630, 632, almost 10 cents, and then 20s down to 605, about 20 cents. Um, about two to one for this one, if I can get in WATT here. Low volume though, lower volume. NIO is back up there. Um, like I said though, with the overall market, I mean, I actually, you know, since this is a Chinese company, it may not be terrible here for NIO. Maybe I'll consider this one. Let's see if we can get a bounce back up here to 78. I might consider NIO if, if it bounces back up there with a 7 cent risk. About 400 shares. Ugh, got in a little bit late, but I'm in with 400 shares of NIO. Um, like I said, about a 7 cent risk. And so risking 30, 40 bucks with this one. We'll see if it works out, but doesn't look like a terrible fade. Relatively small risk. Getting a big push up here. Obviously not the best, but gonna let it work. Looks to be getting a squeeze. All right, I got out exactly 10 cents away, so took $40 loss. Um, NIO just got that big squeeze that I didn't really want, which is kind of the worst case scenario there, but uh, definitely glad I got out of it when I did. I could also look at ACB here, which is the cannabis stocks. I don't know if I want to jump in anything else. Um, quick squeeze up for NIO. Very quick squeeze up, but honestly, ACB doesn't look bad here, but the range is just so small. And I think what's happening here is the market is just squeezing up quickly. Yeah, man, that was like the worst case scenario, Scott, but it happens, you know what I mean? It, it definitely happens in the market, and so I can't really complain too much. It's been a pretty good few weeks trading, and so if I have... Uh, a trade that goes against me, it'll, it'll, it's not the end of the world, I should say. Um, like I said, I'm still looking at ACB. I don't know if I want to get in another trade or not.
Right, and my logic was that since NIO was like a Chinese company, it wouldn't be affected by the overall market shooting up like it is, but I guess it was. What am I trading there? I was trading NIO, which is a Chinese electric car company. John, can you talk about your thoughts on the TradeNet 5-day challenge? Um, I mean, yeah, I can post it if anybody wants it. I mean, basically, like I said yesterday, I think it's pretty tough to be successful at it. But, I mean, it's worth the shot. I mean, especially if you're thinking about using TradeNet anyway and uh, you want to, you know, you want to um, see what the platform is like. You know, I don't think that's, uh, I think for that reason, you can try it out for free. You can get the demo account for five days, try to make it work, maybe win a free account. If not, you'll get a good idea of what the platform is like. Um, and so, yeah, I'll post that actually here if anybody wants to check that out. And so, yeah, basically, what is it? You think you, I think you have to make, uh, how much do you have to make? Does anybody remember with the five day challenge? But yeah, if anybody wants to try out the TradeNet 5-Day Challenge, you can go check out that link I just posted. Five hundred? Yeah, that's what I figured it was. Right, so you can't lose more than $100 a day. And the goal is you have to make $500 uh, within a few days. And you have to do a certain amount of trades, right? But if anybody's interested, like I just said, I posted that link there. But yeah, for NIO, like I said, man, this was like the worst case scenario. <laughs> but it happens. Like I said, though, I was also looking at a... What was the other one I was looking at? Um, Where'd it go? ACB. Uh, ACB, like here's the thing, right? ACB looks good, but the range is kind of small. And uh, with a lot of these other stocks and the overall market spiking up as quickly as they are, I got to be a little bit more careful with these right now. And so ACB doesn't look terrible. If you look at stuff like AMD, AMD is pretty choppy right now. CGC is choppy. Uh, the overall market actually finally squeezed out and so started to squeeze up a little bit. But we'll see if it actually holds or not. But that's kind of keeping me from wanting to get in uh, ACB there. If the spy goes over 280, I'll cry. Nobody wants to see a grown man cry. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, let's see what my trades look like lately. Um, Last trade I uploaded was on the 25th. All right, so I can upload from the 26th to the 27th. Uh, it's not going to show up. Today's trade's not going to show up today. Uh, I have to wait till tomorrow to get today's trade in. All right, so let's see what my chart looks like now for the last few weeks. There we go. Yeah, I mean, this is my graph from the last few weeks. Um, overall, I'm doing pretty well here. You know, I've had three losing days out of 13, so 3 out of 13 were losing days. 10 out of 13 were winning days in the last few weeks. Um, overall doing pretty good. Accuracy rate of around 71.4%. Um, losing winning trades. I've had 10 winning trades, 4 losing trades. And uh, like I said, 10 winning days and 3 losing days. And so 
not too bad here. One thing I am happy with is my average hold time for my winning trades is 32 minutes. And the average hold time for my losing trades is 14 minutes, which means I'm holding my winners twice as long as my losers. And I'm definitely happy with that. I'll take that for sure. Still got some stuff I got to work on. Obviously, I need to scale up a little bit. But um, like I said, lost today. But trading's been going pretty well the last few weeks. And so I can't let the loss get to me today. I'm also looking at BILI if it pulls back up to 21. Uh, yes, it's... Uh, uh, I don't want to mispronounce your name, Sanaru. He says, yo, is this actually live? Yes, it is. TGTX looks stronger than TTTO. TGTX does look strong here, and it looked like a good VWAP bounce down here as well at 630. Uh, it doesn't look like a terrible VWAP bounce. You could use 620 as your risk down here. Previous high of the day up here, around 660 is your reward at least. And so you're getting uh, about 30 cent reward, 10 cent risk. Doesn't look terrible down there. I mean, it's in hindsight, obviously, so, but doesn't look terrible. Uh, like I said, I'm looking at BILI here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's down a little bit after today, Cooper. It's probably down to uh, 68 or so, I would guess, 68% um, or so. But it's still a it's still a good accuracy rate. Like I said, my next goal, I, I just got to scale up in sizing a little bit. I tried to take 400 shares today and, uh, you know, took a 10-cent loss, small loss. But the goal is just to slowly get more comfortable and comfortable using four or 500 shares. Is now a good time to jump in NIO? Uh, I mean, I don't know. At this point, NIO is just very choppy right now. It just depends on what it does at that previous low of the day at 965. But like I said, at this point, it's just very choppy. It's crossing over and under the VWAP, going to the highs and the lows. And so just a choppy, uh, stagnant market. If anybody watched our class the other day about the VWAP, you can see uh, NIO is kind of chopping back and forth between it. And so that usually signifies a choppy market. A lot of other stocks are doing it as well. And you just got to be careful during choppy markets and uh, try not to overextend yourself in, in, in with a lot of these. And so for that reason, like I said, I'll probably end up staying away. BILI is filling that entire gap. It just dropped the entire amount, filled the complete gap. Yeah, I mean, right, for sure, Jason. What's up, Christopher? Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I try to stay live. I try to let people watch everything, you know. I think that's important. Cannabis stock's starting to move, so probably good I didn't short ACB here. Uh, but they are starting to move. You can see CGC starting to test the high of the day. CGC starting to test the high of the day up here. High of the day on CGC is 47.70, and uh, it's up to 47.60 right now. So about 10 cents away from the high of the day here. Looks interesting. We'll see what happens with CGC. Rest of the cannabis stocks are moving up in sympathy as well. You can see APHA starting to spike. Um, ACB moving up. Cron moving up. We also have Weight Watchers popping up on the scanner. Weight Watchers is taking off here, guys. If anybody sees Weight Watchers, this thing is absolutely moving here. Look at Weight Watchers, WTW. I mean, this thing dropped a huge amount too yesterday, right? Big drop yesterday. Lost uh, a huge amount of its value yesterday. And so naturally, I think a lot of people are going to start being pretty long biased on this one because Weight Watchers is a huge company. And you can see it dropped from $30 essentially all the way down to 19 yesterday and so like i said with that i think a lot of people are going to start being long biased with it and look at weight watchers go this morning um huge move back up you know really important lesson on extension you know you see a huge drop for weight watchers it's going to rebound some maybe a little oversold at those levels it was at yesterday spy kind of dipping down a little bit here pulling back some now uh what else we have
Yeah, it's rough, man. I mean, it... I'm, I was always bummed out I never got to try the five-day challenge. You know, like, I never actually got to try the five-day challenge. By the time I found out that they actually had a five-day challenge, I had already bought my account, you know. And so I never got to try it. I was kind of bummed out. I'll be right back. I got to go get a battery for my CBD, uh, for my CBD vape thing. I'll be right back. All right, Tiny, have a good day. Uh, I think I'm using... A, Joe asked, what CBD am I using? I'm using hemp bombs, I think is what they're called. Hemp bombs or something like that. Uh, something like that. Whew. Eric, if you're around, man, I almost dropped your uh, token in my coffee. Gotta put that somewhere safe. Ah, you are there, Eric. What's up, man? Sorry, bro. It's not that it's cutting out. I just walked off, man. I said I walked off. I just now started talking again, uh, Isaac. Uh, about 20 vies. I saved it, though, Eric. I saved it. Uh, here you go. Here you go, John. I mean, luckily, no offense to Avenged Sevenfold, but it l luckily it was just the Avenged Sevenfold token and not the actual beginner trading one. I got both of them. They were both under my computer, so I can kind of look at them. <laughs> Siesta. I need hemp bombs instead of the sativa spliffs. Maybe it'll help my decision making. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm in Texas. I got two kids. Not, I have nothing against smoking, but I can't here, basically. It's just the risk reward's too too poor here, and so I wouldn't do it. But hopefully one day Texas will legalize. But until then, I mean, I'm just not going to risk that. But CBD is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, man. Great sleeping aid. Uh, really helps. Uh, yeah. Here, let me try to check it out, John. Let me try here. Have you used Have you used TradeNet before, John O?
Yeah, mine has like a loading screen that says fill in your details to apply. Right, man. Appreciate it, Spark. Thanks, bro. <laughs> All right, Shiz, have a good day, bro. Hey, Shiz, man, real, real quick, while you're still here, whenever you signed up for the five-day demo challenge, did you go through my link? And if so, how did you actually get to it? Because I'm trying to help John O out, but mine just says fill in your details and never actually loads. Ah, uh, okay, I see it, John O. Okay, John O, so you go to... Um, you go to try our free trials at the top right with the red button. Hover over that, go down, and it should say five-day demo challenge. Oh, wait, that's the same page. I don't know, man. Mine's showing the same thing. I'll reach out to him and ask, but... Man, look at Weight Watchers just go today, man. Weight Watchers just ran up huge. B-I-L-I -I just never stopped. B-I-L-I -I just broke the lows, kept going. Massive, massive washout there. HZ and P is just kind of hovering at the VWAP. A few nice little VWAP bounces for HZ and P, but it's just kind of hovering there now. Yeah, maybe John O. Just go to um, just go to. I would probably just go to the regular trade net page if it's not working. Here, try to go to this one and then try it out here. Uh, hold on. If you want to give me credit for it, you can just go to this link and try to um, just go to that link and then try to find the five day challenge. Maybe it'll work that way. Yeah, y'all want to see what I'm talking about? Eric made me some pretty cool tokens here. Like, check this out. Some pretty cool tokens from Eric, man. Look at this. How cool is that, man? I actually got them right here. I got both of them. I got the one that has both Mitch and I on it. I got the one that has John and Mitch aiding the process. And then I have the uh, one that just has me on it. For founder. It's cool, man. I'm still using that. My wife thought they were cool, too. But how cool is that? Yeah, maybe that's it. I mean, but even Jason said it. My link wouldn't work with it. So maybe it's something about my link here. I'll, I'll reach out to uh, my, my contact. I'm reaching out to them now. Is that gold? Uh, the regular page doesn't load. It might just be traffic right now, man. I'm not sure. 
AMD actually breaking out of this opening range here. You can see AMD had this uh, opening range. Let's see the five minute. See very obvious opening range here for AMD. Finally breaking out of it now. We'll see where that one goes. Uh, Weight Watchers still just running big here. Weight Watchers just running big. Look at this move for Weight Watchers. Spy is actually crashing down some here. Look at the Spy right now. B-I-L-I is just saying I'm going down today. z saying TGTX. Yeah, I like TGTX. z saying too. Looks like a pennant here for uh, z saying You got to see the pennant. It's got the pole here. So I don't hate Z-San either. What's up, pun? Yeah, it's wooden, John. Uh, today was a little shady anyway, pun, so don't stress about it, brother. Don't stress about it. Hey, appreciate the sub, JK. Welcome, brother. Welcome, man. Yeah, for if you're new here as well, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I do this every weekday morning. Uh, every day the market's open, I stream live right here on YouTube for free. And so if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel, click the like button as well. I'm not closing it down or anything, just a reminder. But yeah, look at the spy drop here. Spy's dropping down. Spy is actually finally starting to pick a direction a little bit. Yeah, there goes HZ and P. Like Two Way said, man, you got to respect Two Way. Uh, dude knows what he's talking about, man. Look at HZ and P start to run here. Nice move, nice breakout for HZ and P. You can see that flat top right here from pre-market and during the market hours, and it just broke that flat top. And so I think 28's the significant level to watch. See if HZNP actually holds that 2770 level as support now that it finally broke it, and see if it can make a push for 28. It already broke over it once, still at 2790s. And so we'll see what happens with it. Oh, if that's not a backhanded compliment, Isaac, I don't know if I've ever seen one, man. Terrible backhanded compliment. Uh, <laughs> all right. HZ and P actually pushing over 28 now. We'll see. Like I said, we'll see if 28 and this 2770 level can hold a support. Um, quick push, rejection back down for HZ and P.
Yeah, with Kron, I think it all just depends. I mean, CGC has a very similar move, and so you can see Kron, CGC, APHA, they're all kind of consolidating a little bit here. ACB as well, and so it just depends on what CGC, which I think is the alpha, is going to do. Um, and I think it also depends on what the overall market's going to do, but you can see HZ and P sitting right around 28 now. We'll see if it holds over 28. may make a push here for a quick breakout. I don't like it necessarily for a long-term move up, but a quick spike up, I, I think that's pretty likely to happen, but who knows for HZMP. I think we'll probably at least get a quick spike up. Whether it'll actually hold or not is another story. Um, I think the big level to watch is uh, 2770. What's the chance of Weight Watchers to close the gap above? Let's look at Weight Watchers. This gap, uh, I mean, it depends on what you consider the time frame, you know, and how, how quickly. Uh, in the next day, very low. Uh, I think if, what's the chances this is going to fill the gap today? Extremely low. Um, long term, it's definitely possible to fill this gap back up here, but today, pretty low. I think it may rebound some. I think it's down a ton. And uh, obviously, it's rebounding, looking really strong today. But uh, I don't think it's going to fill the entire gap. I think that's just too much. You know, it would have to go up another ten dollars, and so it's just a little bit too much. All right, see us. Have a good day. What's up? What's up, pun? What's up, man? What was your question, pun? All right, th there's the spike, like I said. I was kind of with two-way on HZMP that I think we might get a quick spike. Do I think it's actually going to hold the gains? Probably not, but I think we would at least get a quick spike up. We got it up to 28.16. Whether it's actually going to hold. There goes ZSAN as well. Nice little pennant breakout here for ZSAN. Look at that move on ZSAN. A lot of people must have seen that pennant. Um, but yeah, two way was right with these. So good call two way. Uh, think or swim videos. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know if we have that many. I got a bunch of videos on it, but if you need help with it, bro, just let me know. Somebody asked me to help them with tafts as well. But yeah, look at Zsa and spike here. There it goes. And like I said, I thought we might get a quick spike for HZMP. I didn't think it would actually hold the gains. And uh, there it goes. Like I said, it. it the reason is because it's pretty far away from the VWAP for a breakout. You know, the VWAP's pretty low down here, and so I thought it would pull back some. But Zsa and spiking up here as well. Uh, what's the scanner that I spot BILI on? I think somebody actually mentioned it in this chat. B-I-L-I -I this morning. Uh, who was it? Somebody mentioned it. Was it John O? What is it? Somebody mentioned B-I-L-I -I a bunch this morning. And that's what ultimately made me start looking at it this morning. Let me see if I could find out who it was. Somebody did. If you're here and you're the guy that reminded me about B-I-L-I, -I, let me know. I know Mike Mike did. Uh, somebody else, though, I thought. I thought. You talking to me two way? You trade about the same as me, but the spy doesn't affect the low float plays. Yeah, for sure. Nice, Fetty. Good job, brother.
<laughs> hey, man, uh, you were right with both of these, man. I mean, you got to give credit where, where it's due. Yeah, no stress, Fetty. No worries, brother. Uh, okay, two way. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, RKDA at VWAP. I don't think I can trade RKDA, but it is at VWAP. The only reason I don't like it, though, is because uh, it broke that previous high right here. And so I'm not saying it's not going to fade. It very easily could, but because it broke this high right here, I don't trust it. Uh, because at this point, when it breaks this high, it's actually putting in a higher high, which means bullish. And uh, with when it does that, it's just, I just don't trust it as much. This channel right here is too flat, and then it broke this previous high right there. So, like I said, I just don't trust it. Um, you know, for a VWAP fade, I really want to see like a more bearish looking trend, putting in lower lows, lower lows, uh, and then a pullback to the VWAP. You know, that's kind of what I re really look for. Yeah, but I think it was you, John. Yeah, RKDA spiking up big here. Okay. Yeah, it was you, John. Yeah, I, th I thought it might have been you for B-I-L-I. And so, Fetty, you got to thank John O. He's the one that really told me about it. Nice, Jason. Uh, which one TGTX is what you did, Jason? Or no. Z San. Okay. Yeah, Z San was good. Nice little pennant there. Beautiful breakout for it. Whether it's actually going to hold is a different story, but that one looked good. A and B kind of pulling back to the VWAP, almost making me want to look at it. Um, it's just, where's my risk, right? You get an AMD here, 23, 28 level. I guess risk could be at 30s, maybe uh, 35. Seven cent risk reward down here at 13 for about a uh, 14 cent reward. So about two to one there, not terrible. If you use 35 as your risk. So if we get some confirmation in that. We got a little bit there. Yeah, we got some confirmation there at 35. Green is always good, pun. Green is always good, man.
Hey, greed is good, brother. Yeah, one of the ways I kind of used to do that, Nick, at least what I would think about with the opening range breakout is that a lot of times stock will maintain, stocks will maintain that upward trend uh, until about midday. You know, midday they sometimes start to slow down and kind of pull back some. And so a lot of times they hit kind of the apex right around midday. And so uh, I would let it ride that trend until noon is what I would try to do for a lot of the time with the opening range breakout. Um, a lot of times I didn't have the patience for it, but it's an idea you maybe you can maybe think of. Nick is uh, holding it until noon. Give it a time frame of holding it to try to maximize gains. Giving yourself a tight risk if it does start to go against you. Um, a lot of the times you can use the VWAP since the VWAP is an uh, intraday trend indicator. You know the VWAP basically tells you what the intraday trend is. If it's above the VWAP, it's in an upward or bullish trend. If it's underneath it, it's in a bearish or downward trend. So you can kind of use that level as risk if you're trying to just ride the trend. If it finally breaks under VWAP, you can get out, you know, if that makes sense. ALDR. Yeah, ALDR did rebound some too. Kind of a weird move though in pre-market at least. During the day, it's not a weird move, but during pre-market, it was a little strange. But good call for sure, outsiders. All right, Pun. Yeah, man, just let me know, brother. Happy to have you there, man. So if you're trying to check out our classes, just let me know, bro. Happy to have you here, man. Good, jo good job today. Green is good. Nice work. Yeah, there's AMD pulling back some. This is kind of what I was looking for, but again, you know, I gotta, I'm pretty, one thing I do pretty well is that I limit myself with my trading. I'm, I'm pretty selective with uh, my second trade of the day. Unless I see something I really like, this would be a VWAP rejection, but unless I see something I really, really like, um, I'm pretty restrictive with my second trade. I, I, I kind of have rules that I have to follow and uh, if on green days I only take one trade, on red days I should only take one as well. Because if I'm taking multiple trades on losing days and uh, only one trade on winning days, then that's going to draw down even if I'm doing well on a daily basis. So spy pulling back here. Yeah, Scott, I was looking at that rejection, man. I was, I really was. Like, you can see I drew out the risk. I even talked about it. Like, this could have been my risk at 35 here. You see some confirmation. This 35 level, you get in at 26, 27. Your risk is 7 cents. You you know, your reward from 27 down to 13 is, uh, what is that, 40, uh, 14 cents. And so your risk is 7 cents. Your reward is 14 cents, exactly 2 to 1. Um, on it and I was really thinking about it, but I just like I said, I'm, I'm a little I'm pretty selective with my second trades of the day If I'm gonna take two trades in the day, I'm pretty selective with it So I just never took it, but it looks good in hindsight at least right now it does VAX. On Weight Watchers, what Nick says his entry was 2067, risk of 10 cents. I didn't have the exit in mind though. I keep my I keep moving my stop loss behind this climb to protect profits though. Yeah, following it makes sense. But I kind of agree with two-way though. Uh, it, it's something I always have to work on. It's like I always try to have a profit target in mind when I get in the trade just because it makes it like the goal of trading is to make it the least emotional possible, right? And the way to do that is just to give yourself a plan before you actually get into the trade, right? So you can just follow that plan. Once you're already in the trade, you're gonna be a little bit more 
biased towards stuff that's in your favor, right? You're going to be the most objective before you get into the trade. And so I always try to make my profit target before I get into the trade, you know, but that Weight Watchers trade was a good trade though for, from me, man. 10 cent risk is tiny for that and big move. And so you did a really good job, Nick. Good job, brother. Nice, Nick. Yeah, awesome trade, bro. Especially with only a 10 cent risk. Yeah, no stress cargo. I mean, most of it was actually Nick and Two Way talking about Weight Watchers this morning, really. So, should probably thank them. But yeah, I'm probably done for the day now. Um, like I said, if anybody's interested in using the broker that Mitch and I use, you can check out my link or you can try to get to the uh, five day demo challenge. Yeah, I'll try to post both of those. I don't know if it's going to work. I'd reached out to them. And so if anybody's interested in using TradeNet, you can check out that link I just posted. Um, which is the broker I use and so if anybody's interested in using the same broker that we use you can check that out on uh, You can check out that link. I just posted um, Also, if you want the five-day demo challenge, I can post that link here as well. So if you want to try to take advantage Okay, so I did get a I, I did get a uh, reply back from the guy hold on one second guys Yeah, nice job. That's great, man. That's awesome, bro. Good job, brother. Nice job, Nick. Hold on one second, guys. Let me uh, email this dude. I heard two way trolls the Weight Watchers gym and walks through with McDonald's to get the girls. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, have a good day. We'll see you all a little bit later. Uh, I'll post it. If anybody wants to check out the five day demo challenge on TradeNet, I'll post that link here as well. They said it's working. I don't know. I'll post the link just in case so somebody can try it. Uh, but yeah, if anybody wants to check out the five day demo challenge on TradeNet, where you can try to win a free TradeNet account. Um, by trying to get a certain thing in five days. You got five days to try with the demo account. And even if you just want to see what it's like trading on TradeNet and TEFs, you can try the five-day demo challenge. And I'll post that link here as well. Go check that out. Just posted that. And uh, also, if anybody's interested in using these scanners that I use on a daily basis, I use Trade Ideas. Super cool company. Really nice company. Allow me to stream my scans on a daily basis. And so if you're interested in checking out the scanners that I use, I use Trade Ideas. And I'll post that link here as well if you're interested in checking them out. But yeah, guys, small loss on the day. $41 loss. I'll take it. It's not the end of the world. Been doing pretty well the last few weeks. And just got to continue moving forward and getting in good risk reward setups that's ultimately what it's about 
Nice job today, two-way, Nick, Jason, uh, Fetty, and uh, Outsiders. Good job today, guys. We'll see you all, Jason, too. Uh, so we'll see you all a little bit later. Um, good luck. We'll see you all in class tonight. And uh, also, guys, I forgot one more thing. If you're interested in checking out our classes, uh, you know, we, we have a ton of content on our site. If you see this here, guys, we do three live classes a week. So we do three uh, fully interactive live classes a week. And you can see if you go to the video member, member video library, we have literally over 50 hours of day trading classes and content. And so if you want to look at day trading concepts, you can go to this and see back testing, setting up your trading screen, uh, using support and resistance, gaps, ranges, uh, following the market. And we have so much content here, guys, over 50 hours of content. Mitch and I both. Um, and then you can see if you want to go to risk reward classes, you can go down here and check out the risk reward classes. And we have tons of risk reward classes as well. Uh, individual strategies, trading psychology. We just got a lot of content. Um, plus, we do, like I said, three live classes each uh, week. So we got three live interactive classes that are each an hour long. Uh, so three hours of content added each week. And it's only $15 a month. And so if anybody's interested in checking that out, like I said, you know, a lot of people are charging thousands of dollars for day trading content. We just try to be the anti-guru here and uh, you know charge $15 a month. So in our opinion, it's super cheap, really good value. I'll post that link if anybody's interested in checking that out. There's the link if anybody wants to check that out. And uh, yeah, guys, good luck for the rest of the day. We'll see you all a little bit later. Uh, for all our members, we'll see you in class tonight. I think Mitch is leading tonight. I think tonight's class is on pennants, triangles, and flags. Identifying pennants, triangles, and flags. And so again, just posted the link if anybody wants to check it out. And uh, yeah, ALDR starting to run. Uh, DRAD, just low volume, not moving. Very small range, just not my style. Baby flags, two-way. Baby flags, you know. <laughs> you can kind of hear it's like a halfway Cajun. Baby flags. But yeah, guys, I'll see you all later. Appreciate all the new subs today as well, guys. Appreciate it.